Hello, I'm John Thorne from Silverson Shooting Centre and this is episode on our series on practical mini rifle. I'm going to talk about stage plan. Welcome back. Now we've covered most of the aspects in terms of stages to some extent, but what we haven't covered so far is how to plan the stage and also looking at things like foot faults. Now all competitions, all courses of fire and practical mini rifle will have a stage and they may well be stage limitations. And one of the common ways of doing that is with foot fault lines. So I've got in front of me a nice square box foot fault line. They're always red and they designate where you can or can't go as a shooter. Now this example, the shooting position for here is I must maintain being inside this box at all times. Now it's quite crucial to have IPSC rules state you can put your foot on the edge, I can put it up to it, but I can't put it over. Now it's quite crucial because normally course designers like me will put this, then put a barrier so it's really quite awkward to get round. So sometimes you'll have to stand on it to get round the barrier, but if I put any foot beyond it on the edge and I take a shot, it's going to be a penalty per shot fired. So I can step out and not shoot at all, as long as every shot I fire is inside that box, okay? And there'll be foot fault lines in all kinds of places in terms of the course. Now, take that into account, I've put down a very simple course of fire here. The, the concept you have is that you're, everything's against the clock, so you try and shoot all the targets as fast as you possibly can. Now, the things that take the most time in a course of fire is the moving from position to position and the getting stable on the, on the gun itself. The actual process of finger on the trigger, how fast it is to pull the trigger on the target, is the fastest thing you do. So from planning a stage, uh, your best thing to do is to minimise the amount of times you're moving and minimise the amount of times you are taking time to set up a shot. Okay, so this example here, I've got two targets at the back at about 40 metres, and I'm going to set the course of fire as being that we have to shoot those from around here, and then I'm going to move forward to first position, to next position, to uh, two. Now, here's it gets interesting. I've made it very simple so you can see the plan. But if I put a barrier between the two, it's possible to stay further back here and take all the shots in one plate. So what you're trying to do is minimise the amount of times you're moving. So in this example, I can do one, two, three movements and shoot four targets from those three places. If I could see all the targets from back here, even a bit obscured, it may be faster to shoot all of them back here with no movement at all. In fact, I'm sure it would be. So a lot of the time you have when you're doing a course of fire for competition is planning your stage. And this is where it gets interesting. COVID has made life difficult in terms of the number of people on the stage, but you will learn more by watching other people shoot, which is why when you do a shooter competition, you'll take it in turns going first. And why it's quite hard to shoot here competitions here, we never get a chance to shoot other watch other people shoot. We have to shoot the whole thing before the competition starts. We don't get a chance to. And it's amazing how much you can learn. A few times we used to be shot and you look at the stage, you've got it planned in your head. Somebody will shoot it and you'll go, oh, blimey, never thought of that. So much faster. So watch other people shoot where you can. It'll always be your turn first some point in time, and that is actually a weakness, but watch the other if you can. A second I'm going to cover is the idea of moving and shooting at the same time. Sometimes it works very well, sometimes it's a nightmare. Okay, so let's just shoot a competition. We'll do now, I'm going to load this start and keep it simple. All right. So I'm minimising the amount of times I'm moving. I've been one, two, three. Now I can shoot all of them from back here. And it may not be as accurate, but it may be faster. So certainly from a time perspective, so that time there was, I uh, didn't count it, seven seconds, okay, 17 seconds. So if we go from here, if I take one position, how much faster is that moving? Three point eight seconds, so significantly quicker. So if you think about it, the more times you're moving, the more times you're wasting time. Second thing about it is the idea of moving and shooting. Now, I can see the targets from here; they're all mostly alphas now. I'm going to try and shoot these, walking from side to side, okay, and see how fast I can do it, and my accuracy. And then I'm going to show you in terms of doing it slowly. So, 
if I can go from one to the other, let's say I won't allow myself to shoot the second target until I pass that point, okay? You see how, in terms of moving and shooting. It's really hard, okay? That's only 20 meters away, and yeah, I've got one delta and two alphas. I put three rounds into it. You think about it, the time it takes, and that time took me 4.19 seconds. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shoot static here. I'm going to move to the position here, and then shoot static again, and see what my time is like. Right, 3.89. So, it's quicker, and also, Alpha Charlie compared to an Alpha Delta, and all Alpha is the other one. So, even that one little test, it is quicker to shoot position stationary, position stationary, with a higher score. Now, the only change that's different to that is when you're moving towards a target. Now, this is where it can get quite fun, and also where your position of um, finger on trigger when you're moving is. If you are engaged on the target and you're keeping the muzzle on the target, then you can move your feet and shoot at the same time, okay? I couldn't do that. So if you see from going from side to side, because my muzzle is coming off the target, that figure trigger, trigger finger's got to come off. But if I now shoot towards the target and I advance towards it, so long as I keep the muzzle engaged on the target, I can move and shoot at the same time. Probably the only time of moving and shooting is quicker, except for a specific course of fire where it suits it. Let's try it out. So it's quite fun. <laughs> um, not overly accurate, but if you're moving towards something, to again, close the distance on our target, it's probably the best way that you can shoot in that way. Now, the other thing about shooting, especially course of fire, is that you're going to get jams. You're going to get malfunctions where it won't work. And there are two kinds of real malfunctions in a mini rifle. You're either going to get a light strike, which is where the round has been hit by the firing pin, but it hasn't gone off. And it'll have a very distinct, we've seen a couple in the series earlier on, it's common. They all do it, a normal gun, ammo, it's just how it is, get used to it. And for the perspective of the gun, all you do is rack the action, get rid of the round, and carry on. The downside to it is, is it's very easy to get disqualified. So if you think I've got a light strike, and I suddenly change it, with a vector again, I clear a light strike with my shooting hand. So I clear it, back onto the next one. So I can't really get disqualified for finger on trigger. But with an AR, you tend to clear it with your support hand. And you've got a T-bar at the back, and you literally shoot, got a light strike, it's so easy to clear it with your finger on the trigger and that will get you a disqualification. It's also most common, the most common I've seen, I've seen actual misfire where a negative discharge has gone off is by someone doing that, has pulled it back, has kept pressure on the trigger and as they let the, the action go forward, it's actually gone off, okay? Immediate disqualification. Probably get your warning for safety as well, so something to consider. But in the course of fire going on, if you have a problem, you carry on shooting, you don't have to clear it. The other kind of malfunction you can get is where you've got a failure to extract or a failure to feed. So that means you have a round that's jammed in there somewhere. It's either jammed in because the extractor hasn't pulled the spent cartridge out or it's jammed in there because it's not been fed off the magazine properly and wedged behind the action. Now, they're far harder to clear. Normally it means dropping the magazine out and digging around with your finger to get it out. It's perfectly acceptable, okay? The choice of zeroing a stage is bad news. If you're going to add in time, you're best off trying to clear it. But again, same thing, muzzle pointed down range, finger out the guard. You can fiddle all you want in there. What you can't do is use any kind of tool implement, so a screwdriver, pen knife, you can't do it, it's finger only. And I have seen people completely disassemble a gun on the floor, put it back together again. They haven't scored very well, but they haven't zeroed the stage either. So something to consider. The thing to consider is get used to this. And again, it's something you can practice at home. And I do this quite a lot. I'll practice uh, a light strike. Simply by bang, 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 gone again. I'll keep changing that so it reminds me where my action is. Also, I'll, on a, a failure to extract or failure to feed, I'll do the same thing. I'll drop the magazine, have a look at it, 
see if I can clear it, and then put my magazine and go again. It's something you practice you can. You can never practice it enough, really, because it will happen. And in course of this, it's something you have to get used to. Okay, so in terms of planning the stage, minimize the amount of times that you are moving around and minimize the amount of times that you are stage three aiming a target. Shooting and moving a target, it can be very good if it's very specific. Certainly side to side, it's fairly accurate. I mean, I'm only 20 meters away from those targets. And when I was stationary, I was faster and scored five points more just on two targets. And again, advancing towards a target, you can break that rule about finger and trigger while moving so long as the muscle is engaged with that target. Okay, things to consider. This isn't something you're going to learn overnight. Watching other people do a course of fire, see the plan around it, and then looking what you can shoot. I guarantee every stage you'll do, you look at it, someone will do it differently, and you'll go, yeah, that is faster. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope that was useful. Uh, see you again soon. Cheers.